Tell me a story. <laughs> it looks like an elk, but it's a deer. Oh, congratulations. Thank congratulations. You. I nice. That. There's some good deer down there. Well, you know, so... I'm not opposed to shooting a Wyoming whitetail. Yep. Not opposed to it. Not at all. So. Well, congratulations. Thank you. I'm so stoked. Awesome. Yeah. What are you doing in the morning? Well, you know, actually, what we've seen happen today, what we had Shelly and Justin in the blind to begin with and going after mule deer, we watched a group of mule deer this morning leave the pivot on the, on the far east end and go over into another drainage into Willow Creek to a group of cottonwoods. And so, and that was a totally different set of deer than we were actually hunting with Justin and Shelly. And so I think probably our best bet is let's get you down in the blind the Taj Mahal right off the bat in the morning. We'll get you set up in there where you got a chance at a whitetail or a mule deer. And then we'll take Sean, we'll take him over to that set of trees and get him set up over there where then at that point we've got a chance at going to day either one. Okay. Sounds good to me. I guess we'll we'll be in the what uh, ground line in the morning then. Perfect. Awesome. Stand to see her cry Looking out at the river all alone Cody stood behind me like a stone While she said goodbye to the last red rock Shelly killed her buck last night, so this morning we decided to try a new plan. It's a little bit different style hunting for me out here on the western prairie, sitting in a tree stand. That's a little unusual. Deer are moving back and forth between feeding and bedding, and we're kind of in the uh, area where they cross through. So we're going to give that a try and see what we got. One last ride into the sun. Silver.
trigger And I stopped the fighting to say goodbye To the last of the Red Rock Riders I knew he'd never see the morning sun That was exciting. We had a small buck come across the prairie, come right in under our stand, milling around. Got some good video of him. And uh, right when he was under our stand, a group of, oh, eight bucks or so crested the horizon another 250 yards out. Unfortunately, they came in downwind of us about 80 yards. They were going to bed. We were, uh, contemplating getting down and doing something they winded us and busted out behind us so we'll go see how trevin's doing and uh take it from there So we step up, you happen to see the arrow, and then <laughs> look up and you see the blood trail, at which is pretty evident here. Very evident. And then there he is. He is gorgeous. That is a beautiful cool eight point, cool Wyoming eight point. Um, this morning, right at first light, we had deer all around us, of course. Um, 
and then they started moving like you said they would we we're gonna come towards this but this guy broke off and just almost like he was gonna go by that like inside that blind he must have been 10 yards from the blind that's cool well then he turned and did head that way and, and we were able to to get Dustin got actually I think he turned a GoPro on and, and he shuffled so when he walked by us I was gonna range him and then I looked at him when I could see him I'm like I don't need to range him he's to top range pin he's <laughs> and so he was probably 18 yards yeah. but he wouldn't stop and so I tried the old meh, meh. finally he did stop that is what you think of when you think of an eight point gorgeous yeah. I'm Kenton Claremont, and this is your Wilderness Athlete Minute. Nothing is going to ruin a hunt faster than if your feet get blistered. The overall enjoyment of any hunt is going to be determined by your physical conditioning, and this includes your feet. I suggest that you make sure that you don't cut costs on your footwear. You got to get a boot that's going to fit you right, and then you want to make sure that you couple that with the right sock and sock liner. There's some preventative stuff that you can do before the season starts to get you ready. One of those things is make sure you work out at least once a week in those boots. That's gonna help break them in. You wanna put somewhere between 20 to 50 miles on your boots before you ever hit the back country with them. For those of you that know you're gonna blister, you wanna just take some preventative steps and put tape on those hot spots before you ever take a step in the mountains. I hope this tip helps you on your next hunt. And for more tips like this, go to traintohunt.com. Got a new plan, Trevin killed this morning. I moved over from the tree stand. I, we got the ghillie suits on, me and the cameraman, Chris. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna ambush these big white tail that are coming out in this field. We think they're coming out right here. There might be some right here in the grass, not too far. We got some out in the field about 80 yards. So that's what we're doing.
our plan worked awesome. We had several does come out early. Um, one of them I could have reached out and touched practically. Oh, 30 minutes later, we had a nice buck move out into the field and bed down at 45 yards. I don't know, he's only bedded maybe five minutes. He decides to get up. He starts wandering over towards us. He probably came in to 15 yards and pretty soon he starts wandering off. I come up to full draw and as soon as I do that, he turns back and looks straight onto me. And of course, I'm at full draw for probably a good 30 seconds and I'm shaking, I've, I've been cramped up and it was real apparent it wasn't gonna happen. Let down, he turns, he starts wandering off again come to full draw again. I couldn't range find him because it was all happening so fast. I judged him at what I thought was 30 yards and I made what I thought was a good shot. And he just took off and he went through these willows down here and that's where we lost, lost sight of him. So we're gonna stop, go look at the footage and get a game plan. What an adventure. <laughs> I don't know how to put it any other way. Sean was set up really. You were set up pretty nicely yesterday. Yeah, we, we found a nice little spot and tucked back in and and uh, kind of went ghillie style, so to speak. And, and it worked. May have hit him just a bit low, we think, after looking at the film. So we went ahead and let this buck lay last night. It got good and cold and uh, we're back out here this morning going to try to find him. We'll spread out and work our way through this, the thick, the willows. Sounds good. One hand on the wheel, no matter how far down the road I go, there's always one more road in you. She'd like for me to sit down, as long as I'm still living, I'll keep Seven. We got it. While she waits all alone, hoping I'll come back to stay. But there's always one more mile to drive down another lonely highway. And I keep one hand in the rigging, one hand on the wheel. No matter how far down the road I go, there's always one more. Well, Quentin, you made a good call last night and telling us we ought to wait. I tell you what, that's Thank the you. one thing, congratulations first off, but that's the one thing that was the best thing we did was just hang tight a little bit. We knew the shot wasn't great. We knew we didn't have a whole lot of blood. We didn't pressure the animal and because of it, we found him right where we thought he was going to go. Yep, yep. It's a beautiful, beautiful whitetail. Nice Wyoming alfalfa fed. <laughs> can't beat that, can <laughs> nope. you? Nope, it's going to be good eating. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks again, Q. Absolutely. My pleasure. Congrats, your first split Thank rock you. buck. Yeah. What an amazing adventure. We got three bucks, three totally different ways. Exactly. Spot right. and stock, blind. Well, uh, just basically it's ambushing. Ambush. And, and, and we're done. Uh, I'm almost sad. Another year <laughs> here at the split rock with Quentin Smith, QRS Outdoor Specialties. What, a, yeah. what an amazing adventure. One hand.